and I am running the show which is the easiest way for me to give a demonstration and for you to understand because every time I create this I will send you out these jobs but after I send this job I realized that there was one problem um, that is uh, causing because of the uh, this customer dimension or the rejected customer dimension uh, data which is coming here so if I run this job like this it is going to throw an error and one other good news guys now the now the profiler and also the debug mode are enabled on my mission and it is working fine so now I will not ask Ashok to show some demonstration on his mission instead I fixed my computer so it is working just in case if any one of you are facing issues that you couldn't see the data I can I can show you a technique that will fix it so if you see here actually it is failing it is failing with the df001 03 customer validation so some part of it it is it is something is happening to this particular table and it is failing let us see what is happening with it mm. You know, if you look at the error, it is not very clear. It says only this particular table doesn't exist or something like that. Let us see here. I mean, why I'm trying to show you is this is how you, you debug the uh, problem. So I'm trying to show you here. So this is the particular data flow that it, uh, the job failed. So you'll have to go by the data flow. Then only it is easy for you to go and debug it. And then it says the ODBC uh, data source, which is the EDW target is the problem so you're going to look at the target and fix the issue have any errors in uh, your SQL syntax so it's asking me to check the syntax and it says the syntax problem is near from edw dot reject custom uh, div limit zero at line one so there is some problem here so let us just uh, look it into it one time and if it is not working I'm not going to spend too much of time Instead, we drop and recreate the table and the problem should get fixed. The, because here in the validation, I don't see any errors. But there is some problem with this table. Uh, you see here, even it says that it could not connect or it should not, it could not get the data. So I'm not going to waste too much of time here. I delete this. And it is not only deleting from here. I want to go into database and then deleted there is some syntax error that would have happened when we are trying to do something else this reject cust uh, dim is being used also in a case transformation so I don't want it to completely delete it instead what I'm going to do is I will put one more table here saying just uh, just to make sense I have given it as reject valid validation so I connect it and say the failed data so now it should be good so let me read on the same job and we proceed with the rest of the transformations today I'm going to show you the uh, how to create a surrogate ID and what is the purpose of the surrogate ID in a data warehouse I mean you are, should be always uh, already aware of it by now uh, what is a surrogate key and why do we do that but I will try to show you it is also important in, in the same type 2 transformation that we need a surrogate ID. So I am going to take the example of the same type 2 and show you. So now the job is successful and the data is getting loaded. So we are, in, we are good there. So let me proceed. And I was showing you a type 2 dimension. And also I have showed you how to build a time dimension. Those two are fine. In the type 2 dimension. Was that a question? Uh -huh. We can do either ways. If I do it with the same job, you will have everything in one bucket so that you can make use of them and differentiate what we were doing. So it is not going to hurt if we do in the same job, but if you want me to do in a, a separate job, I can do that. That is not a big deal. So because the job is taking only. Yeah, that's fine. I go with whatever the request you have. So we'll have this job aside and today I'm going to send you also this job. So we'll proceed with one more job. 
So now I'm going to name a new job here. So no problem. Man. That, that's absolutely fine. It makes even uh, my job easier because if I have any issues, I can uh, debug it easily when I use uh, a different job. <laughs> so let us name it as 002. And today, because we are going to use a customer uh, for our example, yesterday I used sales org as the name and but but have put more more customer tables also in it but here i wanted to put it as cust bin as my uh, job name and in this i can always create a workflow which is a, a always i feel that's a mandatory thing i have to do so that it is helpful for us to even uh, debug and also use the recovery mechanism that is being enabled by data services if without uh, using workflow uh, in your job, you cannot enable that. So I always insist on uh, use this. Zero one, and we say cust dim underscore surrogate ID. Uh, these names are are relevant only for this session, guys. Uh, in general, in the real time, you may not have the same surrogate ID as the name. But why am I doing in that way? Is so that you can follow and when you go back and try it it is easy for you so i always wanted to put it in in the try catch block and and then i go into the data flow i can always have a conditional here that's one of the good ways of of defining a uh, data services job what the conditional does is whether whether it is a failed failed job we are trying to rerun or a new job so anyhow we will come back to uh, what is uh, the purpose of a conditional when we start when we look at the restartability mechanism but for now we can directly give without a conditional so the data flow i'm going to also name in the same way following the same naming convention uh, which i wanted to do as cust dim underscore Sure. No, no, no. See, at the top you see only a workflow. I haven't put the conditional here, but as I told you, if you wanted to make some condition there saying execute this job or skip this job. Let me go back to this. In this particular workflow, I have these three data flows. If you want to skip any one of the data flow or do an, an either or case, run this when this is so and so, or, or I'll skip this, you can always do it. I, I try to show that maybe you don't remember. I can uh, I can show you again. Uh, because you, he raised a question on that, I wanted to use the conditional so that he is clear now. So in here, in a workflow, I don't want to directly put this particular data. Let me do it this way. I'm putting a conditional saying um, hist underscore delta. So we are going to check if a, if a, if a lo load is a history load or a delta load. History load is the initial load. First time you use it, you load everything into it. But second time you do the delta process you 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 are going to you are going to only insert or update those are current day transactions so for that we are going to use the uh, uh, history and delta conditional here so i will remove this data flow this is not required here so if i get in i get this conditional here so i can put a condition here so while putting the conditions always i can say I can define a global variable and better use them because the global variables as I showed you in the script you can control them so here I'm saying uh, dollar g underscore his load so this is what it means is the initial load if the initial load is equal to zero then it is going to run the first data flow which is df underscore 001 01 
cast dim and it is history whereas if this condition is not satisfied i want it to run the else class which is df underscore 001 01 it is nothing other than look at uh, your home guys what do you uh, what do you do at your home your mother will give you at least couple of options today uh, guys tell me saturday evening do you want again the same rice and sambar or do you want me to make some dosa or uthappam for you it's the same way <laughs> so i'm giving a conditional here and asking people to pick whatever they want it to so history is always the same old story the same rice and same curries once we are, are bored with that we are trying to do the delta process the quick and dirty way i want noodles i can prepare it so you have the class here so this is the condition which we are saying your mother asked you whether you want to go with our original food or you want something else so i am saying for the first time i want the original food rest of the times i i want only uh, junk items so that's what i decided so i have put a conditional here even here for the history load i wanted to load everything so i am not going to give any condition let us see uh, what i am going to do here for the history load i go here uh, you will see the difference so that you understand what we are trying to do. In the customer dim, I put it, make source, and this is the query. I say query. In general, naming convention wise, when there is anything as acronym, guys, always use capital letters. And when there is a full word, use a, use a init cap so that it is easy. So we will say. I am creating here again a temporary table guys, just that you understand the purpose of it. So I will say stg cast dim underscore hist. Okay. So I create this and I am done. Here I don't have any condition. There is no condition here that I am putting as part of the where class. So this is going to load everything whatever is in the source and this is for the first time it will do that. But in the second data flow, I'm making it as a delta. Means what I'm going to do here, you'll see, and you'll now understand why we need a conditional. And conditional, this is not only one scenario, guys. You have more than one scenarios where you can use the conditional. It can be used for the recovery mechanism. It can be used for applying a data rule or a business rule. And this is one of them I'm trying to show you. Someone of you are breathing very hard. What is going on there? Okay. I put the target again. Here I am saying stg cast dim underscore delta. So this is only uh, the table that I want the delta load. Let us say my history is till yesterday. I, my first data flow will load only till yesterday. In the second data flow, I'm going to put a where class saying I want data that is greater than or equal to today only. So what I'm going to do here. Uh, currently I don't have a date field here. But in general there will be a date field. If not even we are going to create a date field. In general there will be a date field in, in the source data guys. In case of transaction tables or even the dimensional data. 